Cruising safety tips. How to keep safe on your cruise. Hey guys, it's Michael here and welcome to the channel. Here we look at cruise ships and other types of travel and offer a ton of tips that will help save you time and money. We want you to have the next vacation of a lifetime. So check out our other videos here and subscribe. All right, let's jump in. Let's start with our first tip here. All right, my first tip today is the safety meeting on board. As soon as you board the cruise ship, one of the first things that's going to happen is they're going to have a safety meeting that is mandatory. And they're going to ask everyone to attend. And this is where they're going to show you how to use your life vest, should it ever be needed, where it's located, and they're going to appoint you a what's called a muster station. In other words, should there be a situation on the boat and they'll ask people to gather in certain areas, when you hear that alarm, you'll know where to go. Let's hope that that never happens. But if it does, you're going to want to know what to do. So definitely, definitely attend that safety meeting. The next tip is going to look at how to keep you healthy on your cruise. And my advice here is wash your hands. Sometimes illness can break out on a cruise ship. And when that happens, it can really spread. Uh, that's never happened on a cruise that I've been on. I uh, don't think it's very common, but it can happen. And your best defense is to wash your hands when you're heading to dinner, uh, when you're interacting with other people. Uh, it's just something to be mindful of, and even when you think, well, I hadn't really done anything, wash your hands. I know I sound like mom here, but um, actually, it, it's a very good thing, and it is uh, a very good practice to keep you healthy. Okay, and that leads us to the next tip, and that is to let you know that there is a medical facility on board the ship. Say for any reason that you became uh, or become ill or feeling ill or feeling uh, flu-like symptoms or you're getting sick, something like that, uh, it's a good idea to let someone know. Uh, any of the crew uh, from the on the boat can help you with that and get you to the right place. The reason you want to let someone know is that uh, there may be other people experiencing the, the same feelings. Uh, but also, they can maybe treat you and help you feel better. Uh, also, for that medical facility, there is, say, if you have a, uh, you cut yourself or scrape yourself or uh, become injured in, in any way, uh, they can help you with that as well. Okay, my next tip is going to be on bathroom and shower safety. I know you're going to be like, you're kidding me, right? But no, I'm serious. You've got to remember you're on a moving vessel, and while most of the time you really don't feel the ship move at all, uh, there are times that the sea can get a little bit rough. There may be even a storm at sea or something, and you can feel it move. And sometimes you can maybe even feel yourself leaning just a little bit. So uh, wouldn't be the most opportune time to take a shower. <laughs> uh, after all, you don't want to be in there and scrubbing everything real good and uh, start slip sliding around and end up with your butt in the sink and your feet hanging over. So, no, just be mindful of that. Uh, the other thing is, on some of the new ships, your sign and sell card goes in the slot uh, on the wall for your cabin, and that turns your lights on and off. So, if you decide you're going to the bathroom or you're going to take a shower, and everybody else is going to be leaving the room and going someplace else, Make sure you have your sign and sell card in that slot. You don't want to be in the shower there, scrubbing in between your pinky toes and the, and the lights go out. So definitely make sure you've got your sign and sell card uh, in the slot there to keep your lights on for, for those kind of ships. Not all of them have it, but uh, just be just be safe because uh, when, that, when, the, <laughs> when the lights go out in that bathroom, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> And, and, of course, the last tip there is the floor is very slick in the bathroom. So put your, uh, a floor towel down or something there just so, so you won't slide. All right, my next tip is don't give out your cabin number. 
there's a reason for that. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people say, well, where you, you know, where are you at? Where, where's your cabin? Where are you staying? You know, uh, well, you know, you really don't want a lot of people showing up at your cabin that you don't even know. Come on. But the other thing is, uh, in the past, there have been situations where people have made charges and purchases and charged it to someone else's cabin. Now, that's not really supposed to happen, but it has. Uh, so you're, for, for your own safety, it's just not a, not a good idea to give out your cabin uh, number to, uh, to people that you don't know. You know, you wouldn't normally do that at home. So uh, to stay safe, don't, don't do it on the ship either. All right. The next tip is there are certain things that they tell you that no, you cannot bring on board, such as a clothing iron, uh, candles, personal coffee maker, things like that. Now, if you need something ironed, there's a clothing iron on every deck. I believe it's in the laundry facilities. Also, the cabin crew can uh, help you with that. I believe they offer a service and it's free, if I'm not mistaken, or it used to be. Um, now, a coffee maker, things like that, there's coffee everywhere. But the reason I'm giving this tip is because not only is it a safety hazard, it can also uh, set off the uh, smoke alarm for your cabin. You don't want to do that. <laughs> that don't don't get embarrassed like that. That's terrible. And candles, of course, you know that's that's just really not good. Uh, I understand. Oh, I want to create a little ambiance, you know. But trust me, the rest of us do not want to be woke up in the middle of the night and escorted to a lifeboat just so you can have a moment. <laughs> Please don't do that. But yeah, as far as having something ironed, they'll get you taken care of. No problem, I promise. Okay, my next tip is on wet clothing and wet towels. What to do with them. Well, on most cruise ships, there is a clothing line you'll find in the bathroom. It's there at the shower. It's uh, toward the top. You'll see a little clip, and you can pull that out, and it'll extend across the shower there. And you can secure it and have a clothing line there to hang your uh, wet, wet clothing, wet towels, things like that. It works quite well, actually. What you don't want to do is take that wet clothing and lay it out on the balcony to dry. Uh, you take that stuff, hang it out on the chairs or the railing, stuff like that. Uh, wind can pick up really quick on a cruise ship. And not only will you lose your clothes or blow away, uh, but I sure would hate to see a nice little 90-year-old lady walking along promenade deck enjoying her morning tea and then get hit in the face with a pair of George's wet bloomers. So, yeah, don't do that. Use that clothing line. It'll work for you, I promise. All right, and now what I'd like to cover is a few safety tips regarding porting at the islands. And I want to start with the taxi, the water taxi. Now, sometimes what will happen, your ship will uh, come to an island and it won't be able to port exactly at the pier. So what will happen, the boat will anchor there in the ocean, very close, and you'll take a water taxi over to the uh, port or the pier there. And the water taxi is just a little small boat. It, it carries a lot of people. But the thing to remember here is, for people who get seasick, and even sometimes people that don't normally get seasick, that water taxi is a little different than the ship. The ship, you don't feel a lot of movement, but that water taxi, you definitely feel the movement. It's kind of like being on a boat, you know. Uh, if you've ever been on a fishing boat or a pontoon boat, uh, that's more of what it feels like, and it does rock. So if you uh, have an issue maybe with seasickness, you may want to take something, some Dramamine or whatever, about 30 minutes before you board that uh, little water taxi to go over. And you also want to remember to take some with you uh, if you spend the day there on the island uh, to uh, 
also take for your ride back. That's what I would do anyway. I don't want to be on my way and start blowing chunks on poor old Mabel over here halfway between ship and shore. Another thing to remember that you can do when you're loading up, when you're uh, getting onto the taxi, is to, if you know you may be going to be a little bit queasy, is kind of hold back and maybe, if you can, be one of the last people to board on uh, to the taxi there. Uh, that way you're not sitting, you know, you're not the first passenger on there and sit there rocking and rolling on the water till they load the thing up because they do wait until it's full usually before they go. Okay, next tip when you're on the island, uh, and I'm, I keep saying islands, it could be anywhere that, you know, where you travel with your, with your cruise. Um, you know, it's a different place. You're in a foreign area. Every country has crime. Every country. And so uh, I've never really had any problem. But my tip here is to kind of stay with the flow, stay with people. Uh, you don't want to just wander off by yourself, especially to isolated places. Um, now, if you're shopping, whatever, there, you know, yeah, you know. And even if you're cruising alone, there's no, that's no problem, you know. But don't, you know, don't get off on an island someplace and say, oh, I wonder what's down this road, way back down, through, you know. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stay with the flow. Uh, that's just, uh, not that anything would happen, but you just don't know. You're in a territory that you're, you're not familiar with, and you don't know the good places and the bad places. So, uh, again, yeah, just stay with the flow. All right, and that's going to bring us to our last tip. And what I want to talk about here is, uh, once you're there on the island or in the country, wherever your, your ship ports, sometimes you'll be approached by people. Now, there may be people asking for money. There may be people selling things, uh, clothing, uh, native jewelry, things like that. But you also may be approached by people offering anything from drugs to prostitution. And they may even tell you, hey, it's legal here. No problem. You know, when in fact it is not legal at all. So, you know, use your common sense there. Uh, the last thing I want to see is somebody uh, that's on a great cruise end up in a foreign prison because Mad Dog Boogaloo had the best stuff on the island. All you have to do is just smile and say, no, thank you. Keep walking. You know, you don't got to stand and talk about it. Um, nobody's going to force anything on you. Uh, they're used to hearing no, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Just wanted to offer some safety tips here today, and there's really nothing to be afraid of. I'm just, you know, telling you what what's out there, what can happen, and uh, I've really never had a bad experience. Uh, when you cruise, it'll be the best vacation of your life every time you do it, and uh, your first cruise will prove that, I promise. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, how about a thumbs up? And remember to subscribe. We've got a lot more stuff coming up. And check out our other videos if you're a first-time cruiser. Or if you've cruised before, hey, you might get some new ideas. All right. Again, my name's Michael. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.